Hey YouTubers, this is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a Fisher Pickle washing machine that is not filling properly. This one's just making a lot of noise as the water comes in, so we're gonna replace the fill valves. So we'll unplug it, or turn off the power. We'll turn off both water valves for the hot and the cold, all the way to your right, all the way clockwise, as tight as you can get. So we get both those valves nice and tight and now we're going to pull the washing machine away from the wall just a little bit kind of wiggle it don't hurt your back just take your time a little bit left a little bit right you need you only need about maybe a foot away from the wall is fine and i'm going to use a pair of pliers to kind of loosen these hose clamps that are uh, i'm sorry the uh water hoses that are on the back of the washing machine Make sure you got this valve all the way off. Uh, sometimes you can just do it by hand, but occasionally the installer will have turned the uh, hoses on there with uh, pliers so they're a bit tight. Let me get this lid off too. I'm just going to lift it up 90 degrees and pull it straight up and come right off. Now I use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two Phillips head screws on the left and right corner. And then I can get the console or the controller panel lifted up and out of the way. That will give me good access to the fill valves. Alright, now we're going to press down on a little tab underneath these electrical connectors with the left thumb. And we're going to pull them down out of the fill valves. And now I just sped up the camera a little bit here. I'm loosening this uh, water hose that comes on that out of the way. I'm going to turn it on for a second too to blast out any dirt that might be in there. Okay, I'm going to use Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two screws on the back. They're holding in a plastic plate that helps to hold down the fill valve. So I'll get those two screws out. I also need to take out a screw from one that holds on the uh, brown plastic controller. I'm also loosening up this hose. I'll do the same thing. I'll blast some water through it. Make sure there's no debris in there. Okay, and I'm gonna bring that over to the left here to remind me where that hose goes. It goes, it's the one that goes to the left when I reinstall it. That really helped. So this little screw right here, we see with the red arrow, that's holding on the control, the brown plastic controller. You wanna take that out, and that's gonna help you to lift up this white thing that the fill valves are connected to. You also wanna lift up on this plastic piece pictured with the red arrow that's also holding in that whole assembly and once you get that out you can lift the fill valves out from inside their case and then they have like a uh, on the old valve they have a little rubber sleeve you want to use a flathead screwdriver to carefully lift up and just take your time so you don't rip it you want to get that off of the old valve and then go ahead and put that on the new valve. We'll put a link in the description below where you can get these new valves. They're pretty, pretty inexpensive. And once you get the sleeve on there, you go ahead and push the new valve in. We're gonna do the same procedure with this other side. We're going to get off the sleeve, put it on the new valve, and then wiggle it all the way in as far as it will go. And we're gonna take this whole assembly and just push it back into position. We'll feed the valves through these holes bring the assembly down, put the brown plastic controller back over it, and then add that Phillips head screw that holds it in. Then we'll put this plastic piece back in, and we'll add the screws that hold that in also. We're pretty much done. We did most of the, of the assembly now. Put this little screw in, the one that holds on the brown plastic controller. These two little screws that hold on the white plate. Those in. I'll put the hoses back on. So you might want to do this whole procedure if you notice that the machine is not filling well or maybe it won't even advance to rinse because there's uh, no cold water coming in. 
or you might, in this case, we just heard a loud sound as water was coming in because the valves are getting worn out. We'll put the power connectors back on. We have the wires kind of pointing up and wiggle them all the way in. Do the same on the other side. Tighten up those two hoses. We'll put the control panel back in, slip it into the front, and then we'll set it down in the back. And we'll add two Phillips head screws that are holding that in. So this whole thing will take you probably about 20 minutes to be done. Set that one in. all the way to the left counterclockwise to open them all the way make sure there's no leaks anywhere sometimes when you move these valves they haven't been moved for a long time there'll be a little leak but if you move the dial around usually that leak will stop We're putting the top piece sliding it back into position lowering it down Just you're gonna use my knees to push the whole washer back in toward the dryer. And we'll plug it in, turn it on and run a cycle, make sure it's filling okay. On this machine, you can lift up the lid anytime you want, except during spin, to see how the water's doing. And it should be shooting in pretty strong. You ever lift up the lid and you notice there's very little water going in? It could be that it's got a clog on this little filter that we see here. You might just need to clean away some of that debris. Or it could be that the valves are just getting worn out and we gotta replace them. So the water looks like it's going in there really good. It's common for these valves to fail at about four or five years in, into the use cycle, but they're really easy to replace. Thanks so much for watching our video today. I hope that this video has saved you some time and money. And if so, could you please press down in the video description below the donation link and send us a donation so we can keep this service going. Thanks again. And if you have any questions about this repair, could you contact me at scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.